So if my multiple videos on the series aren't evidence enough, I have an unhealthy obsession a deep interest in the series Boku no Hero Academia. The reasons behind why I enjoy it so much could be a video all on its own, and as I discussed in my last video on the subject, quirks play a large role. I'll be sure to link that video down below if you haven't seen it, but this week I wanted to explore the more biological aspects of quirks, and based on that, present some ideas that I've been thinking about. They are a little out there, but I'll do my best to back up my thoughts and opinions. And as always, you are free to express your own in the comments down below. All that said, let's go beyond and get into the video. Now you're going to be hearing the term quirk factor a lot in this video, so let's start by breaking that term down. A person's quirk factor, as described by the Boku no Hero Academia wiki, refers to the collective traits that compose a quirk. This includes the primary quirk power, as well as the biological mechanisms that allow said primary power to function properly. This definition is a little vague on specifics, but hey, it is trying to sum up abilities that can range from zero gravity, to acid, to tail, to dupla arms. And what I gather from it is that a person's quirk factor is contained entirely within the cells of their body as some component of their genetic material. This idea is reinforced by the fact that, with the exception of the pinky toe, there isn't anything physically distinguishing people who have a quirk from those that don't. Need further proof? Just look at Monoma from Class 1B. His copy quirk allows him to replicate the power of anyone he touches. In other words, he is able to reproduce the biological mechanism of that quirk. And based on the ones he displays, that has to be happening on a cellular level. His ability likely copies the DNA blueprint of the user he touches, and then reorchestrates his DNA to be able to use that quirk. And if you think about it, this makes sense as to why he can have access to multiple quirks, but only use one at a time. You can't just mash two blueprints together. There's also evidence that the quirk factor is tied to genetics in the fact that quirks in-universe can be inherited or modified from parent to child. The most obvious case of this is Todoroki with his half-hot, half-cold, but, and slight, slight manga spoilers here, Bakugo is very similar with his explosion. His dad possesses the quirk Oxidizing Sweat, which like his son allows him to produce sweat with explosive properties from his palms. Unlike Bakugo though, he is not able to willingly secrete it or explode it without rubbing his hands together. It's such a small difference that gave Bakugo so much more hero potential than his father probably ever had. And while we're on the subject of generational changes, I want to take a look at Uraraka, because I'd be very curious to find out what her parents' quirks are, or if they even have any in the first place. The one thing we know for sure is that her exact quirk was not inherited from her parents. If it had been, then they would most likely already be using it in the exact scenario Deku, Ida, and Uraraka described in Season 2, Episode 1, floating the construction materials to cut costs. Unfortunately, I have not been able to find a ton of information on her parents beyond the fact that she clearly takes after her mom, so we can't say definitively whether her quirk is new or inherited. But it isn't hard to imagine one of her parents having some sort of benign power that, say, allows them to float only themselves. Now thinking about this side of quirks led me down some potentially dark rabbit holes. I got to thinking about designer babies, or this concept of being able to create the kind of child you want. At least genetically. No amount of gene alteration will make me want to go to medical school. Mom. But I got around to speculating if this could even be possible in the universe of Boku no Hero Academia. We've yet to see any in-show evidence or even discussion of this, the closest really being quirk marriages. And after giving it some thought, I'm leaning towards the opinion of no, it can't be done. Whether that means legally, or that they just lack the technology altogether, I can't say, but my mind keeps going back to Endeavor. The guy clearly didn't have many, if any, real ethical or moral problems with treating Shoto's mom more like a prized mare than a wife, and he'd already used his power and money to skirt the laws around quirk marriages, so I find it hard to believe he would stop short of bribing a doctor or two to help him see his vision through to the end. Again, they don't touch on it in-universe, and as much as we've been given about quirks, plenty still seems to be in the dark. It's entirely possible that since most children don't develop their quirk until the age of four, that there is some change that they undergo which renders this designer baby point moot. By that age, object permanence is very much a thing, and they are becoming aware of the world around them, so maybe that plays a role in their ability to start using their quirk. Regardless, I have been theorycrafting quite a bit here, so let's assume that going all Gattaca on your children in the world of Hiroaka just isn't a thing. 
What about transplants, though? What if you took, say, Bakugo's hands or Kirishima's arm and stitched it onto someone else? What would happen? Could you potentially create a Quirkenstein's monster kind of scenario? Well, again, these questions are rife with just as many moral and ethical problems, but I think we can do more than speculate with this one. I'd argue that I've put forward enough evidence to reasonably suggest that the quirk factor is contained within the individual cells of the user, most likely as a sequence of DNA. It just makes the most in-universe sense. It's not some special organ or state the brain has to be in. That being said, if we are working from this assumption, I should note that I don't think this means every cell contains what I'm going to call an active quirk factor. Take Bakugo, for example. His explosion quirk allows him to secrete combustible sweat from his hands and then ignite it, but only from his hands. He can't explode his back or foot sweat, so his quirk factor, the genes or proteins that allow him to do this, are only turned on in the cells on the palms of his hands. You can think of it like the difference between one of your brain cells and one of your skin cells. Genetically, they can contain the exact same DNA, but perform wildly different roles within your body. I think the same goes for the quirk factor. It's entirely dependent on the ability as to which cells will have this gene switched on or off. For example, it's only Momo's fat cells that can be used in creation, it's only Kirishima's skin cells that can harden, and Sue? Ribbit. Well, with most mutation quirks, I would guess it's pretty present throughout her body. Because... frog. And the reason why I say it's still present within every cell is because quirks can be passed on and modified. That means it still has to be part of their DNA, even if it is unused in the vast majority of cells. So that's all well and good, but what does it mean for potential transplantation? Well, based on what we know, I don't think you would need to have the dormant quirk factor present throughout your cells to be able to use the body part in question that contains the active quirk factor. If you get a kidney transplant, it doesn't need to have the same DNA as you to function. That said, your body can still reject that kidney even if everything goes right, and I think you could say the same thing about quirks. Especially after what we discussed in our last video on the subject, we know how indelible to a person's identity they are. Getting to the point of using that borrowed power freely would probably make Deku's struggles look like a walk in the park. Forget limitations, you'd probably have a hard time just confirming you have the quirk. Keeping that in mind, I wouldn't say it's impossible based on what we know, but I do think the risk involved and the potential mental and physical drawbacks of quirk rejection are not worth the gain. And this would be especially true if you tried it with more than one power. So you're probably better off just trying to get your hands on some of Deku's DNA- OH MY GOD I TAKE IT BACK! I TAKE IT BACK! GO WITH THE SURGERY! GO WITH THE SURGERY! PLEASE! But those are just my thoughts and opinions, and you likely have different ones. Do you think anything I put forth is possible? If you could create an unholy combination of two quirks, what would they be? Whatever it is, you can let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like. You can click over here on the left to subscribe, but if I've yet to convince you, feel free to check out some of my other content on the right. See you guys next time.